Hi, my name is Jachim Čepický. You don't have to struggle with pronunciation of my name. Jachim or Jack is okay. And I would like to present you the project I was involved in uh, for a couple of years right now. And yeah, see whether you like it or not. Uh, the motivation or one of them uh, I will tell here is let's share the GIS or GIS application much quicker than we used to be before. Or maybe even let's share it at least in the way the RGIS people are doing sometimes. If you see them, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see the overview. What is the idea of the project? I will tell you some little bit of the technical stuff uh, of the about the ar uh, architecture. Of course, uh, something about the implementation. Then I will describe the final product uh, we came up with, and uh, yeah, some more information will come as well. Yeah, come in, come in. Not your fault. Yeah. The idea. Uh, the idea was, um, I mean, we were a bunch of developers uh, working on yeah, web applications for some, uh, for some couple of years. And we were not satisfied with the ease of use of our applications we are working on. They were usually management driven, not developer driven, maybe not even user driven. Yeah, we simply thought that uh, we have to make something much more easier uh, for the user to be able to deploy the map he does on the desktop uh, so that uh, the deployment to the, to the web can be much more faster and easier. Of course, the application has to be accessible for from everywhere, speaking about desktop browser as well as some mobile devices. Uh, it has to perform in a reasonable we uh, level, not necessarily be too fancy, too fast, if you understand what I get, but, but still working well on reasonable amount of data. It has to be extendable, customizable, of course, because we are developers, we want to make things on our way. And it, it would be cool if it would rely on OGC standards, no matter what I think sometimes about those standards, uh, but still I think it's that some standard is usually better than no standard. Uh, yeah, and uh, we love to do free and open source software, so the application should be free and open source, as free as a freedom, not necessarily as a beer. We came up with a architecture, a uh, pretty simple one, right? Everything turns around this project file. And this project file is QGIS uh, based or QGIS project, which is, is save, which is saved into the XML file. And apparently, this project file is read by some desktop application, in this case, QGIS. And the project file points to the local stored data, of course, as well as to remote uh, database storage, for example, and also the project file consumes the data from remote services. And on top of this project file, we can make a OGC mapping server, mapping service. And on top of this mapping service, we can build the final web map. So that, as I said, around one configuration file, you can, you can be con consumed by the desktop as well as by the server. I mean, the, nothing too complicated, nothing too fancy, and certainly nothing too new. So we took those uh, technologies uh, like Python, Django, I will come to this later, uh, open layers, uh, QGIS server along with QGIS desktop, built a custom desktop QGIS plugin for the, yeah, for the workflow, and we packed it uh, together with Docker. The original application was written using AngularJS, but currently we are in the, like, more than half way, like 90% of the way, uh, on the way to VueJS, on the migration, it, uh, migrating it to VueJS. Uh, on the client, apparently, there is Vue and open layers. On the server, there is QGIS3 server right now, Django, and as I said, we try to rely as heavy as possible on OGC, OWS services. Uh, I, had, I heard a bunch of talks already here at Phos4G about uh, Geo API. Yeah, we will probably have to move, move this way as well. Uh, but so far, we use WMT, uh, WMS and mainly WFS. 
uh, yeah, for data exchange. And we came up with a product. The product is called GIS Quick for the speed. Uh, it's a geospatial data publishing publishing platform or the web map, web mapping application. It uses GNU GPL license because we somehow built, all, built on QGIS and so we wanted to be compatible with their licensing model as well. And it should be as QGIS friendly as possible from the user's perspective, not necessarily from the developer's perspective, of course. Uh, GIS Quick consists of, yeah, GIS Quick plugin, uh, sorry, GIS Quick, QGIS Python plugin, web mapping application, and a mobile hybrid, uh, hybrid map. That means that whatever link I will be showing here for you, uh, it, you can open it right here on the spot in your uh, mobile device. I was already saying this, uh, uh, that we try to make this arrow here as quick and easy as possible. That, he, that means that you create a, as I will show you later, if you have a complex project in your QGIS and you want to publish it on the web, the way should be as easy as possible. And therefore, because we are relying heavily both on desktop as well as on the QGIS server, we totally need and we are very thankful for having a stable and powerful QGIS. But we need, of course, more. Use a workflow. How, so how does it work? That could be a demo, but let me show you just a bunch of screenshots, like you have a beautiful, well, depends, but you have some project uh, in QGIS. Uh, you will start fire up our plugin, uh, GISQuick plugin, and within three steps, you will be able to publish the project uh, uh, as a or create a zip file along with the data as well as the configuration file or project file. And when you upload the zip file to the GISQuick application, you will get the web map. Just like that. Try it out here, please. Or maybe later during the break. Uh, you can, we, we have set up a public demo server on the URL projects, GISQuick, or you can create your own setup. Uh, sorry, or your own user. Once you log in, you go to your projects. You can upload the zip file you've just created uh, with uh, the desktop plugin. And here you are. Uh, the, the project is up and running. And you can enjoy it and you can share it with your colleagues, friends, maybe customers. But I would also tell to the hackers among you that you can download or clone the uh, GitHub repository, maybe make some adjustment in the Docker Compose file and fire Docker using Docker Compose up. And you have your local instance of Gisquick round right in your computer running. Of course, you should set the necessary certificates if you want to get public maybe some post-GIS connection as well, but the basic is Docker Compose up. Latest work, the, the project is already a couple of years old, but what we have done this year is that we moved from QGIS 2, because we started when QGIS 2 was the stable, uh, the stable release. So now we, we moved to QGIS 3, and as I was mentioning several times, we are getting rid of Angular and moving to VueJS. Uh, this is how it looks right now, with all the features in it. So what can, when can we see is the standard map, layer switcher, where you can switch either uh, individual layers or we call it the topics or themes, so list of or group of uh, layers. And we have here a data grid, uh, which shows you the data, uh, well, which can be seen in a map, in a, in a table, in the attributes table. And so this is the old version. And this is how the new version looks like. There's a slight difference. <laughs> yeah, I'm satisfied. You can, you can actually test the Vue.js version already if you add slash Vue into the URL of our public demo server. I'm stressing the word demo here, okay? Uh, future plans. 
We totally need to finish the migration. We would love to work more on the user management. We are Django-based. That means that we just have to basically connect the wires all together because the, uh, all the necessary code and user management is there uh, because of Django. Some users, uh, customers even, are requiring feature editing on the web. Oh, again. Well, we have to work on this. Uh, of course, because we are developers, we love integration testing and yeah, continuous integration, stuff like that. This is missing so far, but we would like to have it uh, during this year, preferably. We also uh, had a developer meeting in Prague this spring. So uh, even though I still don't understand how this was possible. Uh, the people came from all the way from Slovakia as well as from Switzerland to Prague to meet there. So thank, uh, thank you guys one more time. Uh, and here are the links where you can go right now. That means the first one, the most important one, is gizquick.org. Of course, visit our documentation at read the docs and make it short. Uh, live demo, you can, you can uh, find a link in gizquick.org, but if you go to projects gizquick.org directly, you can see already some. Uh, we have some reference uh, implementations, either at the university server or by a, uh, well, basically customer who is selling uh, the web mapping applications to uh, local municipalities. And uh, here is some email address, as well as uh, we have a mailing list on hosted on OS Geo infrastructure, so please join in case you are interested. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> now the tricky one. Are there any questions? Ah, yeah. Please, uh, you need a mic. Yes, you need one because of the recordings. Please take one. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I'm also a volunteer in this conference, so I was taught to be straight. Hi. Uh, uh, why, why didn't you use Angular, but Vue.js? We used Angular version uh, Angular 1. New Angular. So why are we moving to Vue.js? Yes. Well, well, it's a tricky one, because I personally have no direct experience with Angular, so this was a decision based from the guy who is taking care uh, on the fr front end, basically. Mm -hmm. Angular 1 isn't supported for a couple of years already anymore, uh, right? No. So we had to move somewhere, and when we met, made the choice between React and Vue and stuff like that, even I could understand within half a day what Vue seems to be about. So I like it, and I support this decision. Nothing more, nothing personal. Okay, thank you. More questions? So, please, give it a shot. Ah, yeah, Michal. Uh, could you possibly show a little bit more of the demo? You are required. It was just so quick that I just did Live so demo. Yes, please. Or whatever. But we are slowly short on time. Or, or, just, <laughs> or just the link, once more, please. Okay, cool. I was just... Yeah, okay. Forget uh, everything I have said uh, a few minutes ago about... Can you as assist me, Michale? <laughs> so this is how you make friends of Sports 4G. So I know, and I would like to... S uh, yeah, what is this? Uh, you, will, you will click. You will have simply have to click. I will tell you what to write and you will click. Here. Have fun. You wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> but you totally have to click on something here. Do you want... I, I'm reading, do you want to allow this app to make changes in your device? This is uh, from Firefox. You need to start a web browser, okay? Yo, cool, cool, cool. And you go to projects, gizquick.org. Ah, yeah. Two monitors. I was told to make it funny. <laughs> okay, okay, hold the mic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next instruction. This window over there. Yeah. Okay, now you hold the mic and I, I hold it. Okay. <laughs> now Yachim will do the stuff. You need an expert. See? That's 
It's Windows, man. <laughs> what was that? Apparently, you need a login and password, which you can find on this quick org page. The user and password, please remember it. It's user one, user one. Where you can continue as guest. One more time. Continue as guest. Continue. You know, well, I, would, I would like to load the projects which I don't have in my mind, so therefore I'm going to go to user one. Oh. Luckily, the mic is off. If I would have the correct URL, I could continue as guest, but now, this is the empty project, right? I have to go to my projects, crossing my fingers that everything will work, of course. Please, this is a volunteering-driven project, right? Uh, my profile. I have some demo applications here. Uh, I hope Prague will work. Okay, continue one more time. We are working on this belt screen uh, so it doesn't confuse you anymore. So now I have my map of Prague, right? Uh, what does it do? It takes uh, the WMS uh, server requests from QGIS server. So all the, all the data are rendered by QGIS into one layer, into one image, of course styled. The reasoning for that is that we don't want uh, the web browser to render too many layers because uh, then it gets relatively slow uh, on, the, on the client side. As well as uh, we are uh, not using vector, uh, vector data in the, in the web mapping applications. Uh, one of the reasons is styling, and the other reason is then you have to really make lots of uh, programming to get to, 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 to in order to get the the things rendered. Like one of the target is to to display cadastro map of the whole republic or of size of Czech Republic in the web browser. And for for this task and with the limited resources we have, we simply cut this decision down to everything will be rendered on QGIS. Therefore, we had the. Uh, we have we also joined the the, the legend right the styling like with, with without any problem now well you could zoom in and zoom out and do the stuff because this is open layers so I won't tell you but you can probably see here that we are using EPSG 5514 which is the very famous Krovak projection uh, what some people like are here these to topics uh, topics are groups of layers. Not to be confused with groups uh, you would be having in uh, in QGIS project, because here the layers are organized into into groups as as you did it as you have done it in the QGIS project. Sorry, thank you, Michale, for your help, by the way. But the topics with the topics you can simply check layers across these groupings, like for example, schooling topic or air pollution what you probably seen, and hydrology as well. Uh, another feature which should be in the project implemented, and now I will hope, because we just recently had some troubles with this, but let me show the attribute table, which came using uh, from the QGIS server using WFS requests. It means that once, and there is a bug right now, so the idea was uh, that once you click on one of these rows, you get the single feature response, therefore you can zoom to the feature as well as you can highlight it in the map. Oh, it doesn't work, I'm sorry. Um, and also, uh, you can filter filter the features using operators and uh, using WFS. That means, as long as QGIS is working, <laughs> and we just recently moved to QGIS 3, where everything is slightly different, but yeah, let's give it a shot. Yo, and I'm already two minutes over. Oh, what a pity, I can't show you how it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, I don't know what's happening. I would have to check the logs. Okay, one uh, feature which is missing here, which I can't show you at the moment, is the feature detail. 
uh, which is based on template. So you as a user are, are uh, advised to uh, uh, create your own template, even though there is a generic one, and then you will see all the attributes and images and URLs rendered in the map as well. Thank you. Any more questions? You still have one minute? Yeah. Questions. <laughs> still questions? Please. Please. Your mic. I'm afraid not no. using the mic. Uh, no, my question is, uh, is there a possibility to add something else or you just can load the zip from QGIS? Or if you want to add a service or something different? Sorry, I was just disturbed. Uh, one more time, can you add something different? Uh, from the, the web interface, can you add other services or is a project just a QGIS project? That you it's a QGIS project. However, the so-called base layers we are, we, we are having here, wow. Uh, there is a list of layers which is loaded directly uh, to the, I mean this, yeah, orthophoto, but they are for, uh, realized on the external service, simply. This is what I was going to tell. I don't know whether the service is running right now, but the, the point is that the client uh, has, so, two layers, right? right? Uh, I mean, in, in, the, in the web map, in the rendering uh, part. The one a base layer coming from whatever OpenStreetMap or WMS external service, and the other one coming from uh, QGIS as a single rendered layer. Uh, does it answer your question? Partly? Yes, I think yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm not familiar with uh, QGIS server. So uh, so you're using a QGIS server in the background. Does it work uh, on uh, via, uh, like through OGC standards, like VMS requests, or is something is this something pr proprietary or? QGIS server uh, tries to implement OGC standards on the server side as much as possible. Uh, it is not the fastest server around. It is probably the slowest one. Uh, but uh, for, for our use cases, it seems to be working pretty well. And uh, what we are doing here, that uh, we are doing WMS requests, but they can be cached. I didn't say that. So they can be cached, and therefore, any other response will be always faster than the previous one. If you want the data to have like changing and live, you don't have to uh, check the cache data, cache layers options. Thank you. There is one more question, and we still have one half a yeah. minute. Okay, I will be quick. Um, how do you uh, tackle the problem that you have the um, authentication database? Um, you can use in, in, in QGIS to store your uh, database credentials, so you don't have to store them in the project file rather than on the encrypted database on the server. And you need a master password for that. So if you work with many people on one server, it's a bit... That is the good tricky one. I have yeah. no <laughs> idea. We will, uh, well, like, Maybe I you didn't... just share the master password or something like that. But no, well, uh, we use, of course, users, right? If you if you if you are having PostGIS database and you want to expose it outside, then, I mean, for the security reasons, I would never allow. F for currently, there is no editing option, for example, right? That means um, the outside world shouldn't see the password because it is hidden in the project file. So at least this. And secondly, I would strictly allow the user to do the stuff is allowed to do in the database. And uh, last but not least. Uh, what we are going to work on is that uh, only some users, so some kind of user management, some users will be allowed or user groups to see or edit the map or layer or not. Yeah, so it's, yeah, F work which has to be done. There was some last question. Yeah, please. Mike. Um, which feature do you like to have in QG server? Yeah. I First one. Uh, which feature do I want uh, to have in a QGIS server oh, myself? Uh, well, I have uh, heard a lot about Geo API, I have to say. So I'm, I would be really looking forward to have something like that. But all the others, if I would assume we stick to current standards, uh, uh, I'm satisfied with the desktop application as it is and with the server. Uh, I need stable and proved uh, OGC API. 
so working WFS among the versions would be a cool feature to have. <laughs> Uh, standard for WFS, WMS 1.3.0. I don't care. It works well. I don't care whether it is 1.1.0 or 1.3.0. I don't care. But WFS is the one we we are building the next features of the application on. So yeah, good WFS support, stable one would be cool. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm afraid there there is no space for any other questions. So please contact me. Thank you for your attention and for your patience.